Hey everybody, this is Eric with Astro with Eric and Astro World TV coming to you from Southwest um, New Mexico where I am enjoying a week under Bortle 2 skies. Um, this has been a great experience right now. It, today is Wednesday. I'm here for a couple more days um, and it has just been absolutely incredible. I've had some opportunities to, um, to travel around this area. Um, we are not very far actually. We're probably an hour out of um, the Gila National Forest, which is one of the largest um, national forests, and I believe maybe even the first national forest um, of the, in the country. And we also took a trip to the Cosmic Campground there at the Gila National Forest, um, where they have Bortle One skies. Um, so there, it's probably mind blowing, you know, to see the Milky Way in basically with your naked eye, I would say. You really wouldn't need any type of telescope or anything like that. You could see it right there. But um, I'll be posting um, some information um, on my visit there and maybe a video and stuff like that as far as, you know, me walking around there. But getting back to here, um, tonight I'm expecting clear skies. I've had really great skies all week since I've been here. I've been really fortunate for that. Um, and this is the week of the new moon. So absolutely no problems, no moon issues at all. Um, so it's been, you know, just great. What I'm doing this week is I'm taking opportunities to image um, targets that I would not have the opportunity to image in my Bortle 5 suburban Illinois skies, as well as the elevation, um, I wouldn't be able to get these. I'm at about 59, maybe 58, between 58 to 6,000 feet um, above sea level. So I'm able to get these targets um, without any problem at all. And what I'm going to be going after and what I'm working on is um, two targets in um, Scorpio and in um, Ophiuchus. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Ro Ophiuchi, um, IC4604, and the Blue Horsehead, which is IC4592, which is in Scorpio. Um, they're not very far from one another. Um, and let me show you what I'm using. It's right behind me here, and I'll show you what I'm using to capture um, those. And I'll also show you what I'm using to capture um, the Milky Way. Um, I'm using DSLR lenses because they're easier for me to travel with because I don't have um, refractors at the moment. Um, I'm switching over to Schmitz right now, but this has also taught me that having a travel refractor is probably a really good idea. So I will most likely be looking at getting a new travel refractor, something between the 60 and the 80 millimeter range. Um, it may be another William Optics, it may be something else, we'll see when that time comes. But anyway, so right now I am using um, DSLR lenses and of basically the same make, the same family, um, Rokinon and Samyang. So let me show you what we're using right now to go after um, Roll Fiucus and the Blue Horse Head. Okay, so this is what I am using to go after those bright nebulae, and there are also some dark nebulae in Ophiuchus as well as in Scorpio. So this is the ASI 294 MC Pro one-shot color, and I have that connected to the Rokinon um, 127 millimeter. Um, and this is at, I believe this is goes down to F2. Um, so I'm sorry, this is a 135 millimeter. So um, this is a very, very popular lens for astrophotography, and it gets you some really great deep sky objects, especially, you know, the ones that are kind, somewhat large, um, like Ophiuchus. Um, you can get Andromeda completely in here, um, but it is a great, relatively inexpensive um, lens 
for astrophotography and it's very popular with astrophotographers. Um, I have running, um, as far as guiding, the ZWO 30 millimeter F4 mini scope and I have the 290mm mini um, guide camera. And everything is running off of my ASI Air Pro and I have that hooked up. And the mount is actually my travel mount. Um, this is this is actually my first mount, um, my first EQ mount that I got started with with imaging. And this is the Celestron um, Advanced VX or AVX um, equatorial mount. And I have it all connected and powered with a battery. This is, let me show you here. This is the EcoFlow River Pro. This is a 725 kilowatt hour battery, and it has a lots of diff lots of different connections. Um, it has um, three AC ports as well as DC, and what I'm using is the DC um, because I have learned that using um, running my mounts and the SIR Pro, um, it's better, it's more efficient running them off of the DC instead of having an AC like with a surge suppressor hooked up to it or anything like that. And I, this is, I believe, 13.5 amps of output, of DC output at 12 volts. So it's more than enough for what I'm running here. So I have the, DC adapter, the cigarette lighter adapter plugged in, and that's going into the ASA Air Pro to manage the camera and the guiding. And right below there, this is a three amp DC connection, and that's running the um, AVX. I can also run um, several USB ports. There's a the fast charger, um, USB three, a couple of USB two A's, as well as a USB-C. And it also has a handy little light here. And if I turn it on here, it will give you information as, as far as how many hours it will be running. And if I turned on the ASI Air and everything, so if I switch this over, it will, high, it will bring up the car setting. And if, but I've, and if I turned everything on, then the internal, um, Invalometer, well, not invalometer, but inverter will um, give me the input and the output information right here. But so it's set right now. Basically, it's 85% charged and at 99 hours worth of battery life. So I can turn that all off right now. So this is the mount that I'll be using. Um, I've already run. Um, a sequence yesterday of Ro Ufuyuki um, IC4604. Um, 300 seconds I did, I believe, about three hours worth. So I'm going to get a little bit more of, of that bright nebula, and then I'll switch over with the ASI Air. You can do planning now with the new update. So I'm going to set up in the plan to finish up Row Ophiuchus, and then, then it'll head over to the Blue Horsehead Nebula and begin that and hopefully finish that up. And hopefully I'll have enough data um, over the night. If not, I'll try again tomorrow too. But let me also walk you over to where I will be doing the Milky Way um, imaging. Okay, so here is where I'm going to be imaging the uh, Milky Way. And this property that we're staying at, it's an Airbnb. They run all of their electricity completely off of solar power. So, I'm, so as for my foreground, I'm going to take a few pictures. Whew, sorry, little, the air is kind of thin up here, so at 6,000 feet, you know. So I will be imaging the solar array here with my foreground as well as these little emery oak bushes that are right there so that'll be part of my foreground and let me show you 
what we'll be using to um, capture the Milky Way. Okay, so this is my Milky Way setup. It's get, starting to get a little dark now. It's getting close to what we call blue hour, which is when the sun begins to set. Um, and this is a great time for me to take this shot of the foreground to blend it in with the Milky Way, which we're expecting to cross right over here. And it'll, and I'm trying to go for a vertical shot, which it's probably going to be close to around the time frame is going to be around 345 or so. I'm using an app called Photo Pills um, to help me plan and determine the best time to um, take this image. So this is the so this is the EOS 6D full frame. And as I mentioned, this is the Sam Yang 24 millimeter 1.4. And I'm using the move, shoot, move um, skies tracker. And I can polar align this with this little laser here. I'm not sure, this little laser, it shoots a really powerful um, green laser that I can use to point towards Polaris, which would be heading towards that way, which is north. Um, and then I have a sky watcher wedge that I can use to help adjust the RA and um, not the RA, but rather the altitude and the azimuth. Sorry. So when you're doing Milky Way and DSLR imaging um, for astrophotography, it's really a good idea to have this. This is an envelometer. And with this, I can set up my times of my exposures and how many exposures I want to take. So this is that setup, and I'm looking forward to trying a foreground. I have done one, um, a, a, a one really nice Milky Way shot um, where the um, other uh, setup is right now, where my AVX is, but I wanna get a foreground, and this looked like a really good opportunity to use these solar arrays for that. Okay, so that's what's going on tonight. Um, like I said, it's great to be under these Bordeaux 2 sky conditions to have this opportunity. So it's been a blast and um, it's been, you know, like I said, it's been a blast. It's just been a lot of fun. And I know I haven't done um, videos you know recently and i apologize for that it's just life gets in the way family stuff like that i'm sure you guys can all understand that um but you guys have all hopefully been supporting and catching up with me and the rest of the guys on astral world so again thank you for the support on that if you like what you've seen feel free to drop in some comments um don't forget to click that um that subscribe button to get, ring the bell that way you'll know um, whenever I'm doing another video um, and give me a thumbs up if you like this. So again, I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, thank you for joining me on these adventures with me in astrophotography. And until next time, clear skies. See ya.